effectiveness of technological models to improve writing skills and English in higher <coughs> education. The research purposes of our research was on the one hand to analyze a model implemented in blended learning modality just to verify its effectiveness and to improve the students' writing skills, and on the other hand just to know if the model of blended learning instruction uh, adapt to professional and personal duty of our students, of the students of our research. And in our study, we create, design, and implement a blended learning model. Um, we were we focus on the analysis of interactive resources such as online grocery, and on the other hand, we concentrate on collaborative resources and we use two collaborative resources such as wikis and um, going to create e-learning activities just to improve writing and the skill of our students. And the method that we use, we use a mixed research method, qualitative and quantitative methodology. And in the case of quantitative methodology uh, of our study, we use an ESCO factor design. And we study a natural group that were already formed. And our research addressed uh, the expected study and a survey method. Um, so we use different techniques, descriptive and differential analysis of the, of the data, of the different uh, stress sample of our study. And on the other hand, we have the qualitative grounding theory, and it is based on the grounding theory because in that case, the theory emerged and developed inductively from the received data and not inductively from theoretical framework. And in this kind of methodology, the process of analysis is dynamic and creative mm -hmm. and is changing all the time. Um, we can distinguish two fundamental states. On the one hand, we have the theoretical sampling, and on the other hand, the constant comparison. Um, we carry out uh, data collection and analysis until theoretical saturation occurs in, in the research. And the population of our research uh, are the students of the Pontifical University of Salamanca enrolled in a specific course. In that case, the name of the course was Foreign Language and Is Didactive uh, One in English and in the blended modality. And according to the data provided by the Office of the University Secretary, there were 451 students in, in that course. The quantitative sample is a probability sample since any member of the, of the population has the same possibility of being selected for our research. And the result of the study can be generalized to a larger population. And the kind of sampling was cluster groups. And at the end, we have more or less 358 students that participate in our research. And from this student, 23% were men and 76% were women. And their ages were between 20 and 50, 58. All of them had finished a previous degree. Um, they, they want to study a new degree just to complement or to enhance their, their education. Uh, most of the students were working. Uh, we can say that 25% had a part-time job. Um, 55% a full-time job. And another important and relevant uh, result was that 86% of our participants uh, were working or have a work related to education because most of them were working in primary and secondary schools. And in the way of the qualitative sample, we have a non-probabilistic sample, cumulative and sequential, and it was made up of a total of 90 one students, 45 men and 46 women, and their ages were again between 20 and, and, 50, and 58. And the instrument that we use in the case of the quantitative uh, research, we use a questionnaire, and we design the questionnaire in three phases. In the first one, we create a draft, and we have a large number of questions, and they were divided into different parts according to our variables, methodology and, and language and technology. And in the second part, uh, different experts of methodology, English and technology analyze our draft. Um, did a report, including contributions and suggestions just to improve our, our questionnaire. And in the last part, 
and we carry on different changes according to their contributions. <laughs> uh, we use different kinds of questions, open, closed, multiple choice, uh, liquor scale rating, um, because we wanted to <coughs> avoid possible negative effects, uh, such as hollow effect, and they just answer just because all the questions are the same, and they write the same, same opinion in all of them. And the internal consistency of the question that was uh, assessed using homework alpha. And then the external uh, validity uh, was carried out by the expert that we uh, mentioned previously, by the expert about technology and methodology that changed all our draft. Um, <coughs> and the qualitative uh, method, where we use an instructed uh, interview and the internal validity of, the, of this interview also achieved because the criteria of different authors, such as Coleman or Nadia de la Montista, were met. And the reliability of the, of the coding uh, was uh, get and was very high because we compared our uh, uh, coding with the coding of different experts. In total, we have 16 experts that were coding our interviews and we get an um, agreement of the 81%. Okay, so we can say that the level of reliability meant that the encoding were clearly valid and the high agreement between the encoders determined that each category was part of the final entry of our research. And the final word, in the case of the quantitative method, our student filled the question <coughs> in the first and the last lesson face-to-face -face lesson because we are talking about a uh, blended learning modality, blended education. So our students have different face-to-face uh, -face lessons. It's not just online online lessons. Um, so they, they fill in all the 716 questions. And in the case of the qualitative methodology, uh, we carry on a 91 interview, some started interviews from different months, from May to July. And it one lasted between 35 and 51 minutes, and all the interviews were videotaped, and we recorded about 60, 60 hours. Then, in the organization analysis of uh, data, in the case of the quantitative method, once we finished uh, the final work, we ordered the data, we prepared the register just to process all the questionnaire that we have collected previously. Uh, we collected in an outdoor file. <coughs> After creating the data matrix, <coughs> we produced all the, all the data and did the specific and inferential analysis using a specific uh, statistical software for it. And then we used Microsoft Word just to illustrate our, our result. In the case of the qualitative method, we follow the scheme proposed by my side Huberman for the qualitative data analysis. And there were three basic steps. In the first one, it is the data reduction. And in that case, we carry out the separation of unit. We decided to choose the line uh, just um, in order not to disturb the meaning of the test. We identify and classify the elements through categorizing and coding the data units. Um, we use a uh, special software for it when they are noticed. Uh, secondly, we follow the data display. Uh, so we have the data in different charts and cluster. Um, we use Microsoft Office Word uh, for it. And finally, we follow the last phase that is called drawing and verifying conclusion. In that case, we present the result, we interpret them, and we start all the main conclusions of our research. And um, the main result, that we want to emphasize is that based on the overall evaluation of the blended learning course, the blended learning model that we designed, we can say that the majority of the students, more or less 96% of them, consider that the e-learning activities, the learning that we designed through the different asynchronous tools, were appropriate to their writing skill in the case of four weekends or glossaries. And referring to collaborative uh, resources, as you can see here in the case of uh, Wiki and Forum, uh, we can say that 61% of the students consider that they that this kind of um, of tools, asynchronous tools, help them quite a lot. And 
just a few percent of the students, just the 80.5 percent or 5.4 percent, consider that they are not very helpful or not helpful at all. Similar resources were obtained in the case of the groceries. <coughs> then, uh, in the result, the variance, uh, the analysis of variance according to a different age, uh, we can say that there were significant differences in the use of these um, tools, these asymptotic tools. For example, in the participation of quorums, we can see that the youngest students, um, <coughs> the, there were differences between the youngest student and the student. Uh, age uh, between 30 and um, 34, with the youngest one participating in this activity with more frequency. The same happened in the case of so the weekies, there were significant differences between the youngest again and the students say between 25 and 29, and again it's the youngest the students being the most involved in, in the use of this uh, technology. And finally, the participation of the, uh, the grocery, there are also significant differences, but in that case, it's not between the youngest and the older. Uh, in that case, it's between the students, say, uh, between 30 and 34, and the students uh, aged between 25 or 29. Okay, and another important result is that the majority of our students consider that they interactive and collaborative and synchronous tool that we have used to design all the e-learning activities and promoted collaborative uh, learning and interaction and the creation of a learning community in we in that communities they can exchange their opinions and points of view but at the same time they learn how to respect uh, others' points of view and recognize uh, their classmates' work. So in a way, this kind of learning community increases students' motivation. And on the other hand, they also consider that the model implemented allows teachers to design different activities uh, that they can assess during the whole course or the whole semester and then they carry out a continuous evaluation. And at the same time, the student can self-assess themselves because they, there are some activities, for example, on consciousness, where they can uh, see the results after they finish the activity and then they can improve or they can try and do it again if they get a, a bad mark over it. And um, the students self-assess their writing and reading skills at the beginning of the course. Um, we can see that in the case of writing, the 32.4% of the students responded that it's not good. And the 47.2% responded that it's really bad. And in the case of reading, uh, we have better results, but they are very similar. So the 46.4% of the students responded that it was a bit bad, and the 30.7% that it was very good. And all these results change at the end of the course. Um, and we can say that they all improved. And in the case of writing, we can say that now the 44% of the students think that their writing skill is very good. And in the case of writing, reading is better, and the 61.5% think that it's, it's very good. Okay, so finally, we present the most important conclusion of our research. First of all, we can say that our students, the learners that participate in our research, consider that the asynchronous tools that we use, such as we use for online glossary, make possible the practical reading and writing skills. And at the same time, there are other, another aspect or other aspects, such as cultural topics and methodological aspects of teaching English in primary uh, education. Um, we can also say that the use of these asynchronous tools contribute to the creation of a learning community and strength teamwork. And the model implemented supported the learner center uh, pedagogy. That means that the students were placed at the center of the learning, the digital learning process. So that now they they behave as an actor. Now it's not anymore a passive student. They are more active students. 
So the roles, uh, teacher roles and student roles are changing. Okay. So they create knowledge. <coughs> and then we can also say that asynchronous to promote continuous assessment and student self-assessment. Continuous assessment because a teacher uh, had different activities that they can set and this is possible because of the asynchronous uh, tools, because they break all the special, special and temporal barriers. And at the same time, they can use a student self-assessment and peer correction. And finally, we can say that our data show the potential of using all these kinds of tools just for academic pur purpose and beyond all these temporal special barriers of the traditional uh, education.